You know, if there's one thing that has stayed perfectly consistent through these last three films that are, I guess, in the same universe, it's Kenneth Branagh's mustache. Thing looks fire. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Josh. Today we're gonna to be talking about A Haunting in Venice. This is the third movie in Kenneth Branagh's little series of Agatha Christie adaptations. The last two, of course, were A Murder on the Orient Express and then Death on the Nile, uh, neither of which were movies that I particularly loved. I think I like Death on the Nile a little bit more. That might be a bit of an unpopular opinion because I've seen a massive amount of hate for that movie. Uh, and this one actually got quite good reviews, at least compared to those previous two. And my interest was particularly piqued in this one because it has some horror elements in it. However, the premise is generally pretty similar to the other two, although I think this is an adaptation, or at least based on Agatha Christie's novel titled Halloween Party, which I have not read, and I have not read any of the books. But the premise is very similar. Once again, we have famed detective Hercule Poirot returning to solve a mystery. Actually, it doesn't really start that way. At the beginning of the film, he's basically retired. He's living on his own. Tina Fey plays this author who approaches him and essentially tries to bring him out of his retirement and back into the action because essentially there's this seance that's being held to try to communicate with this woman's dead daughter and she wants him to find out how this psychic played by Michelle Yeoh is faking this act. What I'll say about this is that it's definitely less pulpy and reliant on a star-studded cast as Death on the Nile was. I mean you do have some recognizable faces here obviously Kenneth Branagh directing this and starring in it as the same character that we've been following for these last three films. And then you have Tina Fey and Michelle Yeoh, but other than that, there aren't many big, huge names in this. And generally speaking, it does focus on some pretty heavy human drama, that whole reconciling with our ghosts of the past. Unfortunately, for a movie that does focus very heavily on human-based drama, it's a shame that they couldn't make it a little more interesting and actually get us to care as an audience. At least me personally, I didn't find myself very invested in many of the characters in this. I will say I did like Tina Fey as this author. She writes who done it herself so the movie almost has this little meta element to it going and her relationship with Poirot is really very central to this movie's themes about reconciling with your past and understanding the difference between happiness and satisfaction. That's actually a line pulled straight from the movie if I'm remembering it correctly, and I really liked that. And I do think Kenneth Branagh has a pretty keen eye for good visuals. I mean, setting a movie in Venice is never gonna look ugly. You can definitely tell he used less green screens for this one, although a lot of the shots are interior, so it's not like there was really a need to rely on them, as in Death on the Nile and Murder on the Orient Express. Lots of Dutch angles too. I mean, tons of Dutch angles. He really likes to use those for some reason. And they do benefit the film some of the time. <laughs> My biggest problem here though is that the side characters are just not very interesting whatsoever. The middle chunk of this film is by far the weakest. It's mostly just Poirot interviewing all of the suspects and it just feels so robotic and subdued from the line delivery to the really obvious red herrings. This movie is an hour and 40 minutes which I think is shorter than the previous two and I do appreciate that, that it doesn't have a bunch of fat attached to it. But at the same time, the entire middle chunk of this movie had me bored and really just waiting for things to pick up again. I don't know how much these movies differ from the novels, but I found the reveals in all three of these films to be kind of disappointing. And it could be down to the execution, or it could be an example of a novel just not really translating well into a screenplay. Another problem is that this is sort of half a mystery and half a horror film, and the supernatural elements don't work very well. They're very ambiguous as to whether or not things are really happening or not without getting into spoilers. And I don't know, I think I just preferred the pulpiness and the silliness of something like Death on the Nile over this. Again, appreciate that this thing's shorter. So in the end, uh, we have a great lead performance, great production design, and some pretty solid human grounded themes too. But it's a shame they chose such a boring storyline to inject those things into. I'm keeping this one short because I really don't have too many other thoughts about this. It wasn't terrible, it wasn't very good either. Would I recommend it? Not really, you could probably wait to stream it. Unless you just absolutely loved the last two and you love Agatha Christie novels, you'll probably have a good time with this one too. But most of the things that I found memorable in this were in performances or visual design. 
none of the writing really felt that coherent to me. So I'm gonna give A Haunting in Venice two and a half out of five stars. So there you have it guys, those are my thoughts on I guess what might be the first Halloween themed 2023 movie because this does take place during Halloween. I gotta be honest, the roster for the rest of this fall in terms of horror and Halloween themed movies doesn't look great. I mean, we've got Saw X and Exorcist Believer. Other than that, it's not looking too great, but uh, we'll see. Anyways, be sure to drop in the comments what your thoughts are on this movie. If you did see it, do you like the other two movies? I don't know. To me, all three of them are just kind of mid, again, with Death on the Nile being my favorite of the three. As always, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later.